Oslo, Norway, 1942, said to be in control of the occupational Nazi government. Sven Johansson was told he would never walk due to spinal tuberculosis, but after four of his vertebrae refused, 11-year-old Johansson walked out of the hospital. Yet as he exited, he was kidnapped by men aligned with an occupational Nazi outfit, transported over a thousand miles, and held for years against his will in a facility subject to harsh conditions. Actually, that never happened, at least to Sven Johansson, but it did happen to Pat Moretta, who you may know from the Karate Kid movies as Mr. Miyagi. Moretta wasn't snatched up by agents of the Nazis, but of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. He spent most of his childhood in hospitals, and when finally exiting under his own locomotion, he was kidnapped and brought to a concentration camp just outside of Phoenix called Gila River. At this location, a short 70 years ago, over 13,000 people were caged against their will. At the time, it was Arizona's fourth largest city. Those 13,000 people had done nothing wrong. They hadn't even been accused of a crime. Captors at the camp received trainloads of coerced humans, whom they called evacuees, that were told to report or else. At the same time, 100,000 others, each with their own story and their own hopes and dreams, were caged at facilities elsewhere. Those who were caged were rounded up under the justification that they might do something. With notable exceptions, such as R.C. Hoyles and Freedom Communications, the concentration camp system happened largely unabated. You may think that the Constitution is your security. It is nothing but a piece of paper. You may think that the statutes are your security. They are nothing but words in a book. Charles Evan Hughes, who held the title Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, recently when asked about the camps that existed in the 1940s, Antony Scalia, one of the most highly placed within the coercive monopolistic injustice system, said he would not be surprised to see it happen again in the time of war. It's no justification, but it is reality. There is truth in that insight because the same corrupt institution involved with Gila River and other camps, and which earlier put forth as law that certain individuals constitute only three-fifths of a person, still is granted deference and relevance by some. Fortunately, adherence to that inherently bankrupt system are lessening. It was not Executive Orders 9066 and 9102 or the Constitution or any other text on paper that is responsible for these widespread rights violations. It is individuals. Just doing my job doesn't absolve one of personal responsibility. It's only as those facts, those commonsensical ideas, replace ideas recognized as bad that advancement can occur. Consider a visit from a person employed by the Census Outfit. I'm with the United States Census Bureau. My name is Chris, okay. and this is the American Community Survey. It seems pretty innocuous, right? I want to emphasize that any information you give our representative, that's me, will be kept confidential. By law, this survey... Do you still think the same after being informed that it was census information that was used to facilitate the forced migration of 110,000 people. The bad idea that affords extra rights to some people has for most of us been the only lens through which to see the world. Most of our American government classes in gun run indoctrination centers skipped over this particular chapter in American history. School is an 18 year forced government training program that sterilizes the potential for brilliance in children. The produce of these schools, or this state controlled manufacturing operation, is a society willing to submit, to obey, and to listen. At the same time, corporate media lapdogs liken that same class of criminals to authorities, which only buttresses the misinformation and allows them to control the conversation. When the concentration camp at Gila River was closed on November 1945, those held captive were given 25 Federal Reserve notes and a return ticket to the city where they were kidnapped, hardly made whole for the wrongs committed against them. Uncle Sam and we Americans, we like to use euphemistic words um, or invent words uh, if we think certain, certain other words are too harsh. So they call them relocation centers. They were, they were America's versions of concentration camps. Anytime a group of people is said to have more rights than others, these sorts of things can happen, and they will happen again, unless we each choose to withdraw our consent from that bad idea that says one person, based on their title or costume, has more rights than you or I. Fortunately, due to a multitude of factors, ideas are being shared at rates before unprecedented. Good ideas are replacing bad ideas. A lot of the constraints on us, a lot of the uh, 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 strings that hold us like puppets are really inventions of our own mind. I'm not saying that there aren't armies and police and, and various ways to, to punish uh, 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 deviants. But there isn't any way to punish 
a large number of deviants. To learn more about Gila River, check out Years of Infamy, The Untold Story of America's Concentration Camps, 